What animal has a terrible reputation? But in reality is not bad at all? Vultures. Basically nature's trash collector. Opossums. Despite the mean mug and demon-looking eyes they are not aggressive at all and are generally clean creatures. T-Rex. Never heard a human before. Tasmanian tigers were all snuffed out for eating sheep. After they were all killed it was discovered that their jaws weren't strong enough to puncture sheepskin. Opossums. Friendly little guys just puttering around eating trash and bugs. Humans are awful to them. One of the top three ways a wild opossum dies is by BB guns or the infection from a BB shot into a non-lethal body part. The next one is being run over. A lot of people do it on purpose. Then it's exposure. They tend to hunker down when it's cold, even when their nests aren't warm enough. Two out of three of the most common ways an opossum dies is by human hands. And that's just not acceptable. Be kind to the trash cats. They evolved during the Cretaceous period and we need to respect our elders. Edit. Thanks so much for the heartfelt replies and the awards. I'm thrilled to hear how many people feel the way I do about our fluffy neighbors. It warms my heart that there are so very many of you guys, more than I would have thought. That respect and want to protect opossums. I hope this changed a few minds for those who had some misconceptions about these vitally important by T Kitty's red heart. Remember they are friends not foes. Apparently domesticated rats are intelligent, cuddly, and playful among having other good pet qualities. Still don't want one in my house though. Black cats. Black cats. One of the oldest superstition is a black cat is evil and will bring on bad luck. Black cats have the highest rate of euthanasia, 74. 6%, and the lowest rate of adoption, 10. 0% of any color. Before anyone else says it. Shark. Crows. In India crows are unholy according to religion. But they. Are known for their remarkable intelligence. They can remember faces. Recognize and imitate human voices. And even use cars to crack open nuts. Spiders. Especially Australian spiders. There's only a couple you really need to worry about. The rest are great for catching annoying insects and actually deadly spiders. Armadillos. Notorious for carrying pandemic-level flesh-eating diseases. In reality, extremely few are actually recorded to have said disease. Which is easily treatable with antibiotics if symptoms even surface. Usually treated by just washing one's hands with soap. 95% of humans have a natural and highly effective defense against leprosy and Hansen's disease. Hyenas are also highly intelligent animals with complex social structures. An excellent memory. Rhinos. Actually pretty gentle for their size. Hippos are the real assholes. Bats. Kids are often scared of bees, adults too, because they sting. But bees are absolutely vital to growing fresh fruit. Edit. I am being told that it's more of a myth that local honey also helps with allergies. Before I put that out into the world. I'll want to look at it further. But bees are still crazy important. Sharks. Survived all five mass extinctions and we're going to be the ones to wipe them out because a movie made us afraid and callous towards them. Daddy long leg spiders. They're harmless but they feel like they be crawling all over my soul. Wolves. They're always interpreted as evil and highly predatory to humans and livestock. The truth is they're way more afraid of us than them. And attacks on humans are extremely rare. They also only go after livestock if they have no other choice. Of course this is the majority cases. Wolves are fascinating in that they're very intelligent and are closer to humans than we think. Some wolves and wolf packs are just assholes. Pigeons. They're completely domesticated animals that were kept by humans for thousands of years until they were just dumped on the streets en masse once they fell out of usefulness. They're not even native to most of the countries they're found in and they still show a lot of color patterns that aren't found in nature and were intentionally bred into their ancestors that were show pets. I genuinely feel bad for them. People just call them ugly vermin when the only reason they're there is because we abandoned them. Sharks are always portrayed as killing machines when in reality shark attacks, deaths on humans are incredibly rare. Wolves. People seem to be intent on making them out to be killers. Whenever a sheep gets killed. Everyone's reaching for their weapons to eliminate them. 
The corvid birds, ravens, crows, magpies, tend to get a morbid association with death and decay. Because they eat carrion, they are highly intelligent, and the ecosystem needs carrion eaters. Pigeons. We brought them to New York, and we curse at them for being there. They are like stray dogs, but they learn to live in that city. Possums. Kind of ugly and always look wet and dirty but in reality these little guys are nature's wonder. Not aggressive. Immune to rabies and almost everything else. Update, they're not totally immune to rabies. They rarely carry it. As a marsupial, possums have a lower body temperature than most other mammals. So their bodies don't provide a suitable environment for the virus. Kills, eats almost 4k ticks a week. Apparently many people believe this to be BS. Personally, even if they eat 4 ticks a season, I see that as an absolute win. They don't destroy property, lawn, house etc. 70 million year old species, aka living fossils, oldest living mammal, nature's most efficient waste management creature. If it's edible, they'll eat it, including commonly dining on animals struck by vehicles on the road, bones and all. They aren't picky eaters when it comes to troublesome garden pests like slugs, beetles, and cockroaches, but they will leave the flowers or veggies you're growing undisturbed. Immune. They may be the key to battling venomous snake bites the venom of rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, and other dangerous slithery snakes. Researchers have been looking into whether they can find the toxin neutralizing strain in their blood, which could potentially be used to treat humans who have been struck by poisonous snakes. Smart. Possums tested with a higher intelligence than more domestic animals like rabbits dogs and cats particularly when it came to finding good grub and remembering exactly where it was to go back for more snapping turtles so many people are afraid to move them out of the road just pick them up by placing both hands on the bottom of their shell on either side of their tails you can safely move to almost halfway up the shell if the turtle is large i carried one the size of a literal car tire in my arms once it wasn't happy but it didn't attack most snappers have no interest in biting you. They'll mostly open their mouths and hiss. But as soon as you get them in the air, they'll forget about you and start moving their legs because they think they are swimming in the air. Seriously, they do. It distracts them. This is where you have to be careful not to drop them because their claws will hit your fingers as they swim and those claws are sharp. If you get bitten, stroke the turtle gently up its neck and under its chin until it relaxes and lets go. But you won't get bitten. I've been working with these guys for years upon years and have yet to be bitten. Knock on wood. Bees. I'm gonna answer this from the other side of the coin. Nature had no right making bears so damn cute and cuddly looking. They're vicious animals. Between Hollywood and teddy bears. Everyone thinks bears are these timid creatures that only eat fish and berries. In reality, they're literal fur monsters. They're nature's garbage disposal. When bears eat people. They don't kill them right away. They hold them down with their paw and just start eating stomach first. You can't outrun them. They run considerably faster than us, unless you have a fat friend with you. You can't climb to get away from them. And you can't fight them off. Unless you have a powerful gun or bear mace. You're just up shit's creek. Snakes. The Christians blame pretty much everything on them and most other people think they are disgusting or scary. In reality they are just some lil, or huge guys that slither around all day and have a funny tongue. Dave. Barracuda. As a dive instructor, many client have fear with the fish. But they are really calm and mesmerizing to see. Notice no one has said mosquitoes. Fuck those things right off. Orcas. Spiders. Also. Orca spiders. Alligators. The chances of being attacked by an alligator are smaller than you think and they are less aggressive to humans than crocodiles, especially the saltwater and Nile crocodiles. Crocodilians in general are also very important to their ecosystems. Piranhas are not as deadly dangerous as the media makes them out to be. They still can attack and injure a person. But cases of fatal attacks are rare and it's nowhere close to popular beliefs. Honey badgers, misunderstood little warriors. Cheetahs are pretty chill. Bats, they're just sky doggos. Don't mind me, 
just downvoting all the pity moms after a kid in my neighborhood had her hand ripped off by a cute little pitbull who is the sweetest ever. Edit to add some responses to typical pity mom facts. Pitbulls are so high in attacks because people miscategorize them as other dogs. This logic would then apply to every dog on the list. From top to bottom. So. Pitbulls would still be at the top. Every pity I've met is such a sweet. Nice dog. Every animal is sweet and nice. Until it's not. It's the owner. Not the breed. These dogs were bred for fighting. Guarding. And attacking. And those same genes run through all pits today. Just like human beings rely on natural instincts embedded in their DNA. So does any other animal. Pitbull instincts are to maul and kill. No matter how docile an animal is. Its instincts will instantly take over any emotions. My pit is such a snuggle bug. That doesn't change the fact that it is a dangerous animal. A bear might want to snuggle too. But that doesn't mean it won't eventually hurt someone. Remember Siegfried and Roy? Their Bengal tiger. Who was a big snuggle bug and also a dangerous animal. Eventually mauled one of them. Pit bulls are one of the only responses in this entire post that are pets. Sharks. Bees. Spiders. Wasps. Mosquitoes. Opossum are wild creatures that people don't understand for the most part. People understand dogs way better. So. Why is a documentedly dangerous domesticated pet so highly defended if the majority of people know it factually to be dangerous? Gorillas. Humans back then were terrified and maybe even hated gorillas because their bigger size and greater strength lead us to assume that they are vicious and will attack at any time. It isn't until Binti Jua, Jambo, and the famous Harambe incidents that saved gorillas' reputation. Polar Bears. All they wanna do is drink Coca-Cola and have snowball fights under the northern lights. Looking for idiots who post pit bulls. Pig's pig. I will elaborate why. They are born with a full set of teeth. Sharp ones. By the way. They can walk within minutes of being born. They can swim from their first day of life. All the piglets form a hierarchy from their first day of life. Which they respect, from strongest to weakest. Meaning the strongest gets the best teeth and the weakest gets the worst one. If they are born in an enclosed space, like a farrowing cage in a pig farm, they will choose a corner to sleep and a corner to urinate and defecate. They are very clean animals. It's human misconception that they like to stay in their own filth. Actually, in the wild and in free-range farming, swines will roll and relax in puddles and mud to keep their skin hydrated and sleep on clean, comfy surfaces, nowhere near their own poop. Sadly, People force them to sleep in their own excrement and even throw their food in that as well. Their stomach pH level is so acid that they are able to digest bones and hair. Remember the scene in Silence of the Lambs? Closing parenthesis dot. They are extremely curious, sociable, smart, and playful animals. And they can easily get depressed, this always results in cannibalism in farms. They are very tough and can recover from almost any injury. I worked in a pig farm for 16 months. And I sutured Countel's piglets after their mom accidentally stepped on them and ripped their skin and muscles off. I'm a veterinarian. Not to mention that, sometimes, when the sow lays down to feed the piglets, she will, most of the time, lay on one to two piglets and deprive them of oxygen. One time, while I was doing my rounds, I noticed some legs coming out from under a slepping sow. And I quickly lifted her up and pulled two piglets out. They were purple and not breathing. So I started doing chest compressions. Blowing air into their little snouts. And rubbing them. And after 20 to 30 seconds. They started squealing and kicking. Keep in mind that sows are between 100-350 kgs. Maybe even more. And the average weight of a piglet is between 0. 6 and 4 to 5 kgs. This can vary also. Moms sing to their piglets while they are feeding and are extremely protective of them. This behavior is different actually for every race of swine. Some are very good mothers and some are really bad. They can associate actions with smell, color, shape, or sound. So they will remember who was nice to them and who wasn't. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like. If you would like to see more content like this in the future. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified about future videos. Now check out one of these interesting videos.